Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This episode 94. Today's guest is an award-winning actress. She's been in hundreds of films, stage, and TV productions, including John Turturro's The Jesus Rolls, FBI Most Wanted, Law & Order SVU, The Americans, The Blacklist, As the World Turns. And of course, she played Jerry's jaded ex-girlfriend in the season two episode of Seinfeld, The Baby Shower. Please welcome Maggie Reed. Maggie, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. All right, Maggie. So take us back. 1991, season two of The Baby Shower, um, coming off a Jake and the Fat Man episode. But tell us a little bit about uh, how the role came about. Uh, was there an audition? Um, what did you know about the script, et cetera? would love to hear how the role of Mary came about. Okay, cool. Um, so it was actually 1990. Um, I don't know why, but they, this was their sixth episode that they actually shot in real time. There were the oh, four, the four that they did earlier in the year in 1990, which I had seen because I was living in New York and I was doing as the world turns, um, in New York. And, um, just as a side note, before I forget my very first sitcom was in New York, I had a week off from as the world turns and it was with Jason yes. Alexander. It was called everything's, everything's relative. Re yes. Yes. Yeah. It was one of the only episodes that actually made it to the air. It was with Ann Jackson and John Bolger. And that was really, really fun. Um, uh, so it's 1990. I decided I'm going to take a break from As the World Turns. I drive out with my baseball bat and my whistle all by myself across the country um, and my cat. And um, uh, I hit L.A. and I actually booked a, a, a sitcom called Babes um, with Wendy Jo Sperber and Leslie Boom. Um, Rick Overton, I think, was in it as, as well. So that was the first thing that I like within the first couple of weeks that I was there. And then um, this is November of 1990. And uh, I, I get the call to go to Radford Studios um, and go to this audition. Um, I because So I had known the show because I'd, I'd watched those first four episodes. So I was pretty excited about it, especially the, the role, you know, was just a blast. Um, and uh, you know, I, I went in, auditioned, there was Larry David, Larry Charles, Tom, Tom Charonis, um, Mark Hirschfeld, and they're all sitting down on the couch. So I'm standing above them. Very small room, um, not a large room at all, uh, windows, and uh, they're like, fantastic. And so they said, can you wait out in the hallway? And I'm like, okay, sure. And then, you know, I see girls going, coming in and going out and leaving. And I'm like, this looks pretty good here. <laughs> like I might get this. And then they have me come back and they give me some notes and, um, you know, I'm driving out and just like a lot of the, the, uh, actors that you've talked to on your show. Um, I get the call as I'm driving home, uh, get back to the set because they'd actually started the episode already. I think it was Thursday, um, when my audition was, so they started on Wednesday. Uh, and this character was not in the Wednesday script. Um, so they're like, something's missing from the script. What can we put in? So they wrote Mary Cantardi, my character, and then they had the auditions on Thursday. And then I started rehearsing on Thursday and then Friday. And then we had the weekend off and we came back and did the Monday, Tuesday uh, schedule with the Tuesday being the audience um, day. So, wow. And, and so was that audition the whole monologue? Did you, you know, your whole monologue? Was that your whole audition or no? Yeah. 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 Um, I show the, the, um, episode, like the, the roles, like do you actually show the, wow, well, we can't, I, we, we can't because of like YouTube, uh, might flag us, but our, yeah. our, our fans know the, I mean, know it inside and out. I mean, we, we all, you know, know it inside and out, but, um, showing yeah. it, we, I'm not sure if we can get away with, but, um, you know, I'm right, curious right. what, what kind of notes, um, you know, Larry Charles gave you as the writer, as far as that character I means it like a true story by any chance like did he get yelled at by an ex an ex or anything like that um no um but the guy that i was dating at the time he's like oh my god <laughs> um you know that reminded him of somebody he dated before um so he he was a little trepidatious getting into our relationship but it, he ended up being the father of my two children so it, oh, wow. it didn't uh, it panned out pretty well um uh so no that yeah it was the whole scene and um, I came up to Larry David uh, when we were, I think it was probably Friday, maybe even Monday. And I said, you know, should I start it like, you know, just completely, you know, like 
nothing's happening. Just, hey, Jerry, hi, remember me, Mary Cantardi. And he's like, no, you have to be a direct, like, locomotive, like, just zoom in right away. We don't know what's going on with her, but we want to know there's something going on with her. And then just let it go. So, and his direction was completely right. Um, mine was much more like, oh, technical, you know, like, oh, and then I'll switch. But no, his was like, you know, had that low simmer. Because it's like three years of pent up rage in this woman. And then she right. finally <laughs> sees him. You know, she's probably been looking for him for three years to just let him have it. So, um, yeah, it was really, I was, I practiced that monologue out in that parking lot at Radford Studios over and over and over because I knew I could not miss one word. I could not miss one beat. Um, I had to do it, you know, word perfect, everything. So it would, it would work. So I was pretty, pretty happy with it. You, it was memorable for sure. And it's funny, you just mentioned, I mean, uh, a laundry list of just iconic names from Larry David, Seinfeld, Hirschfeld, Tom Sharonis. Like, again, now they're well known, obviously, but in 1990, right? I mean, this show was getting on. I'm just curious, yeah. was, and, and you were doing As the World Turns, right? I mean, were you, were any, uh, probably 97 or something, might be intimidation going in a room like that, but was there any, like, uh, I don't want to say fear, but um, anxiety uh, in front of these guys. I know you watched four of the episodes before, but was yeah, it kind of easier than it was early on? Chris, that's a really good point. That's a really great question. I think it really helped me because all I knew was that it was a funny show that I'd watched the first four episodes of, and I just booked Babes, and I was coming off of As the World Turns. And so, I mean, I was feeling pretty high with, you know, what I was doing with my career. And yeah, there wasn't much intimidation going on. So yeah, it would probably be a lot different auditioning for like the eighth season or something. But yeah, they had no idea who they were going to become. Then, because it was this, as I said, it's it was the sixth show that they actually shot. Um, so it was uh, they did the four, then they got picked up. They did an episode before the baby shower, and then the baby shower was the sixth show. So it was the first. It was the second show after they got picked. Up. <laughs> right, so, and, and you <laughs> you had mentioned um, everything's relative with Jason uh, Alexander. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that and then kind of seeing him on the Seinfeld set. Was there any, um, you know, any talk about that, especially because like you said, that show didn't really get picked up. Seinfeld had just gotten picked up for a second season. I'm sure Jason was probably still like, who knows if it's going to make it and, and that kind of talk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was so, um, you know, he was having a fine career with Broadway and everything else that he was doing. Um, and so, it, you know, it was a, the, it was a lead guest starring role on everything, everything's relative. So he remembered me. So it was, it was fun to, you know, to catch up with him. Cause I think everything's relative was 87, maybe 88. So it was just two years before, you know, I got there in 1990. And then, so I don't know why they put the baby shower on the second season's DVD, but you know, that's what they did, but it was actually their sixth show. Yeah. And was there any, I mean, Jason turned out to be, you know, he, he made George Cassandra one of the greatest characters of all time. Clearly. Were there any, did you see any, any of that in 1987 and everything's relative, like any, you know, just snippets of greatness that you thought, wow, this guy is going to be something or, um, you know, any stories like that, that, that you could kind of foresee in, uh, in Jason? Sure. Because I mean, he already had a well-established career for one thing, but just being on set with him, he was so, you know, just had that relaxation of knowing that he was a great talent, you know, so that he didn't have to push anything and he didn't have to prove anything. You know, he knew that he was, he was good and we all did too. And, um, you know, now, now that I think about it, probably one of the reasons why he might have remembered me is because my character was going out with his brother, who was being played by John Bulger. But mm -hmm. I end up kissing Jason and pushing him down onto, onto the couch because something, some wonderful business stock that I had given them had, had worked. Um, so uh, that was fun to do. I, oh, I remember, <laughs> I, remember I, would, I would slap his knees. If you watch the little clip I have on my website, yes. I yep. would slap his knees because um, I was so excited about this business thing that was successful. And he'd go, can, can, can you can you please not hit me that hard with your knee? <laughs> so I had to like let go of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's great. He's he's a blast. I mean that that scene you're in 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 the baby shower seems like such a fun scene. I mean it's a party. You got the you got the cable guys there. You got Kramer there, Michael Richards. Everyone's there. I mean, talk us through that. I mean that scene. Just how 
especially with your monologue, I mean, how many, how many different takes was that? Uh, you know, as far as I know, you said you were practicing it for a while, but it had to be kind of a, a longer shoot, I would think, kind of just making sure they got every angle. They cut to reactions a lot and stuff like that. Uh, well, when you shoot a, a multicam, which I'm sure you guys know, all the cameras, the four cameras are on the set. And I don't know if you do know, but uh, I, I also teach sitcom. Um, uh, the fourth camera came about because um, it started with three cameras with the Desi, uh, Desi Arnaz, you know, uh, originated that with Lu I Love Lucy. And then the fourth camera came about because of Mork and Mindy, because um, uh, they, the, Rob Reiner, you know, the, they couldn't follow um, Robin Williams all over the place. They added that fourth camera. So, um, you know, they're getting all the reaction shots and everything. So we might have taped it three times. Might, I don't think we taped it many more than three times um, because each camera is getting the close up or the wide shot or, you know, all that. So that's the beauty of doing a multicam because you, you can just shoot and shoot and shoot. You don't have to reset up the lights and, you know, do over the shoulders or anything like that. Um, so uh yeah another thing about jason before we get off of jason um he and i ended up doing um uh, plays at the tiffany theater um on sunset boulevard uh, at the same time he was doing his truman play and i was doing a play by uh, minda burr called misconduct allowed that i did with peter reckle i don't know if any of you are days of our lives fan but uh he was starring in that show and we were um at the same there were two theaters at the tiffany theater and we were uh, ended up being there at the same time. And I saw Jerry, you know, Jerry came to see um, Jason's play. So uh, that was fun. And Marla Freeze was in that production. Marla plays the uh, flight attendant on the baby shower. I don't know if you remember that oh, character. Yeah. Quite droll, you know, no, you can't do that or whatever her line was. <laughs> yeah. He was in the play with me. So it's like, you know, six, six degrees. Everybody, everybody knows everybody. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and even in, uh, uh, everything's relative. Uh, Gina Hex is also uh, yeah. was a big player in that, and then obviously became uh, George just as a therapist uh, years later on Science. Oh, she was she was, a, she was a series regular on Everything's Relative. Yeah, right. So I mean, there's so many connections from the show. It sounds like you still have, and I know you still talk to Christine Dunford, yeah. Melanie Smith. Uh, Geez, we see on Law and Order all the time with uh, Mariska's, and you know we she, she has yeah. some Seinfeld history as well. But I'm just curious back back to the scene and back to the set. Um, and you mentioned David Charles Sharonis, like who was kind of from your mind running the show at that and, and this specific episode was it the writer director? Or did they all kind of have their hand in in what was going on on the set, or did, was Jerry heavily involved? I'm just curious. It was a it was a small knit group, but. Um, yeah. I'm just curious who uh, who was kind of pulling the punches on the uh, on the set there. I'm, uh, most people say Larry David, but um, obviously Larry Charles was heavily involved in writing this one. Yeah, I remember. Uh, you know, when you first asked me that question, which is a great question, um, it's Thomas who came to mind, the director. Um, and then Jerry and and Larry and you know Larry would go and have meetings and everything in between to punch up lines or whatever. Um, but I remember Larry, uh, Tom Tyronis being, um, you know, he was the director uh, having a, a lot of input, you know, like I said, they didn't know who they were going to be at that point. Right. So I think figure out their roles to each other as well. I, I don't know. You'd have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Tyronis, you know, he ended up being the director for the first, you know, uh, five seasons. So I think getting his feet under him early on was probably key. Um yeah. You know, you know, Maggie. You know, we, we we've touched on some of your past work, but it, it seems like you've done you've done so much, and and it's like a lot of it was drama and dramatic, and then there's also the comedy angle. Which I mean, and even in Seinfeld, your your comedic performance was kind of dramatic performance, right? You're giving this monologue, and you're you know you're belting it out, and you're yelling at Jerry. Um, I'm just curious. I know that you said you also teach um, sitcoms. Um, what do you prefer, the the co comedic acting or, or or dramatic? Is there one that you prefer more than the other? Huh. Yeah, that's a good question, too. Um, uh, you know, I think it's more, I don't know, I think I've had more fun doing the um, comedic stuff. Um, uh, especially now that I know more about <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, when I was on Seinfeld, I was still just like, oh, let's just, you know, 
let's just wing it and see what happens. Um, I had done a lot of theater and a lot of classical theater and um, comedy and drama um, before that. So I think that's why I was able to um, bring the height to the Seinfeld character, you know, the potency to it. Cause right. I'm, I was used to playing, you know, outdoor theater and, you know, reaching the back, the back walls. Um, so it was kind of operatic, you know, <laughs> in my intensity. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, it's ideal. Like, like Christine Dunford said in her uh, interview with you guys, it's the ideal schedule, you know, it's, it's, you know, nine to five pretty much. Um, and then until the last two days or so when it's really intense and, you know, and you get the weekends and I mean, it depends on the schedule because there are, are only so many uh, multicam uh studios in in los angeles and there are fewer here in new york um uh so they have to like to to stagger their schedules so some um studios would share like i think friends ended up moving into the studio that seinfeld was in um or they shared it at one point so i don't know where they put the sets but um <laughs> you know so they would have to stagger like one show would be monday through friday and the other show would be wednesday through tuesday so can you still uh, recite your line from that episode? Like, clear as that? Remember me? Mary Contardi. We had a date three years ago. Took me to one of your shows. Said you had a great time. Said you'd call me the next day. Um, well, and he keeps interjecting in there. <laughs> uh, liar, liar. You know, <laughs> everybody call me. You thought you could waltz through the rest of your life and never bump into me again, but you were wrong, Jerry. You were wrong. What did you think? I was some sort of poor, pathetic wretch, some person who could be dismissed and ignored. Some, oh gosh, what's the next thing? Pro probably people know it. Insignificant piece of dust. You mean insignificant piece of. You think so, something about you think I'm this, and then I say, but you are the insignificant piece of dust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, See, that was who, great. Needs, who needs the <laughs> clip? That's 30 years later, man. That's amazing. That's so great. Well, it's good writing, you know. So, yeah. well, it's it, it's and great. Larry Char, yeah, Larry Charles loved those dark episodes. With the, Jerry gets shot in that episode. I mean, it's a it's a dream, but still crazy, crazy episode. Yeah, where does it rank on your on your the rankings? Oh, good question. We actually have it pretty high. I think maybe our producer could pull that up for us. Um, I think it's top thirty. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like thirty-one or thirty. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere up there. I mean, it's got so much in. It. I I love I love the Jerry. You know, the Jerry getting shot, the Cable Boy, and uh, you know, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of good nuggets in that one. Obviously, yeah. your scene, Dunford is great. We were just talking about how good she is. Yeah, and Marla, Marla Freeze has this great little, you know, cameo in the in the. Uh, yeah, I mean. It's a yeah. I think like again, it's season two, and like you said, it was it was like the sixth episode shot, um, and they were still kind of, you know, feeling their way. But I mean, really, uh, each character kind of kind of showed themselves in this episode early on, right? You kind of you learn a little bit about the dynamic with Jerry and George. Um, we love this kind of early Elaine, kind of cutesy and kind of. Uh, You're always looking to climb the status of, of being better than she is yeah. with the, uh, the Kennedys. Right. right. And really One, giving um, to, to, to Jerry, too, you know. Oh, yes. of course. And then kind of Kramer just being kind of awkward. I mean, Always I, scheming. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I'm curious. I mean, it was early on, and I don't want, I don't want to compare this, like, as the world turns, but kind of the, the vibe on the set. And I know you were still kind of young in your, your career there, but... Um, like, did you foresee, like, wow, this is going to become, you know, as it says over my shoulder here, like, the greatest comedy ever? Or, like, when you when you hung it up, you finished filming on Tuesday night, you're like, all right, that was good. That was kind of like doing everything's relative. Or did you kind of sense something special here? Babes. Yeah, I mean. Babes. Uh, it uh, really didn't feel any any different than those. Yeah, no way you could tell. There was no way because it was they, like I said, it was the sixth show. So they, they really had no idea. They weren't popular yet. Um, uh, it's all the different storylines going on. Um, you know, I could tell that they all interwove with each other right. and that that was successful, um, which is a Larry David, you know, uh, trademark um, is dropping little notes here in the, in the first act, as it were, and then like tying them all up at the end, you know. Um, so no, I couldn't tell. I could not tell, but I was glad because I'm still still buying me groceries. You know, right, right. 
<laughs> we, had, <laughs> we did. We ranked at 29. Uh, our producer just checked for us. We had a 29. So Ohio was pretty close in the top 30. Um, yeah, I mean, even then live, you could tell that that was kind of an episode. But again, it didn't air the way it was shot, it sounds like. So it was further down in that second season. Um, but it's funny, like not noticing it, you know, then, but kind of noticing it now. Uh, I'm wondering if, um, you know, as you went through your career, because that was early on in your career as well, um, was there anything that you could have picked up even from them being still early on, um, whether it was the way Jerry was on set or was it the way, you know, they handled themselves or something with the way they, you know, Sharon, as you mentioned, I don't know if there was something when you went on to other shows, was there anything you kind of took with you? And even in your teaching now uh, that you learned from Seinfeld or that you maybe just, um, even not from being beyond the set, just from being a fan of the show later on that you can kind of take from how they kind of ran things or, um, you know, yeah, the unselfishness was, maybe. Yeah. Even then it was a really, really well-run show. Uh, remarkably, you know, even though they were in the baby stages of, of, of creating the whole series, um, I did not notice any glitches anywhere in any department. Um, they seemed to all be very much on top of it. I do remember, you know, rehearsals with Jerry with my, you know, <laughs> vehemently spraying all over him my thoughts I remember him kind of you know backing up a little bit looking away he it might have been after he asked me out now I know that you you've uh you've noticed that with some other people that have been <laughs> interviewed yes. by you yes I was another one that he did ask out um because it was a Friday um we had the weekend um but <laughs> I actually had actually had another date and also just my little the little you know, the little birdies that you don't always listen to, the little red flags that you see, but you don't always listen to. I was like, I didn't want any of my personal stuff winding up on stage. You know yeah. what I mean? Some, yep. You know, so I was just like, I can't go out with him. I just, I just can't. Um, but a couple of my friends did go out with him. And, you know, it, it seems like I really missed out because apparently he's a really good kisser. <laughs> so, <laughs> Whoa. All right. Here first. <laughs> No, um, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah, I, so I don't know if there's anything else to, to take with it because my training, my the theatrical training, really helped me propel me through that scene. Um, and just getting the practice, you know, of course, helped a lot. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, an interesting question. It was a uh, it was a classic scene, and I'm just trying to picture like you in the audition. I mean. Because sitting down doing that, I'm assuming he's got, were you, I don't even know. Are you sitting down in the audition? Because I feel like you need to be standing up and like. No, no, no. Yeah. Really. No, I was standing up over all these men that were sitting on. It seemed like the couch was extra low too, for some reason. And there was a, like a coffee table in between me and them. And then like a desk, like over to the side. Um, but yeah, I was like, just letting, I think Jerry might've been sitting down. Or, so or maybe, maybe, maybe. Maggie, they started the show already. They felt something was missing and literally called you in that day and yeah. and hired you. Right. Is that, I don't want to, I mean, if we hear these stories a lot when people audition for Seinfeld. It's like, you know, Saturday evening to get the call, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. This Was this normal to you or you were just like, hey, I'm, let me. Oh, yeah. I mean, every, every audition I've gone to, they've said, oh, you're, you got it. No. No. I, I, <laughs> I think it means the like the fact that it was so late in the in the process that you were kind of just pulled in at the last minute. That seemed odd, yeah. no? I mean, kudos to them for you know yeah. just whipping up and whipping up a character that really made it help, made help the whole talk. thing work. Yeah, it made that whole scene work. Like tied the whole thing together. It was supposed yeah. to be George with the big speech, and then you know they gave it to yeah. you. Um, he was supposed which, to all the things I said to right. Christine's character and didn't get to because right. he got. Re intimidated by her and you know it's interesting i just thought of this actually is that you know throughout the series it's pretty well and it's, it's part of the stick of the series is basically jerry's a new girlfriend every episode right he's just he just kind of goes through these girlfriends and breaks up with them for different reasons um right. this kind of set the tone for that and you were the first you were the first and probably only one to kind of get back at him for that you know, he's always breaking up with these girls on the show every other episode from then on out. And then none of them get to you really tell them off for it. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting that you kind of set the tone there. Yeah. But I remember in your interview with with Melanie, my friend, Melanie Smith, um, she said that she her character broke up with him. Right. Um, so she and I are kind of in a pod there of, you know, yes. people that rejected him instead of him rejecting 
the women. So yay, That's Melanie. Right, the <laughs> That's the Hamptons. You know, I'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, Maggie, because uh, I'm a pretty big Lebowski fan. You're in uh, Totoro's The Jesus Rolls. How did how did that come about? I mean, that's a great cast too, as well. That must have been a lot of fun working on that. I'm curious uh, your thoughts there. It was an audition again in a very small room um, with uh, with the casting director, um, and uh, he's really good friends with John Totoro, um, and. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I auditioned and about, I, I think it took like a month for them to, uh, call me and, and to do it. And we shot it in, uh, uh, I was Tim Blake Nelson's wife, wife in that we played the the doctor and, and his wife who, who take care of um, Bobby Cannavale after he gets shot in the groin. Um, and, uh, uh, we were walking around, you know, during the lunchtime with our pajamas on because they wake us up in the middle of the night and nobody, nobody in the Bronx or, or Brooklyn, I think it was, um, where we were shooting, just nobody, you know, people just walking around in their pajamas, no big deal. Um, so yeah, there was, it was, uh, it was kind of a, t- a tight set, um, t- energetically, um, uh, there were there were some things going on that I wasn't necessarily privy to, um, maybe script things or something. But uh, John was really quite generous and nice. Um, he's a wonderful man. In fact, he went to school with the man who was my uh, children's husband. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> father, <laughs> my children's father, <laughs> and oh, New Paul. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was so, a long uh, time in the making. That, that that's probably why the script had some issues. That was a long time in the making. Yeah, it was. Um, so now you keep. Uh, I mean. Mentioning your children, I'm just curious, um, now that Seinfeld's on Netflix, and I'm just curious if it gets, you know, if, if the youth of America are going to start watching Seinfeld as we did back years ago, I'm curious if, you're, if your children are into it. If so, um, um, what do they think of your role? Well, they, they, you know, their friends show it to them or they show it to their friends if they're just meeting people for the first time. Um, you know, they send me screenshots of it if they see it, just catch it on, on TV. And their dad actually um, was on the, um, uh, oh gosh, what was that? The Penske, the Penske Files. Um, he plays the, he's tall. He plays the, the guy in the office um, with George, George gets a job with yeah. Penske. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he Mike? I maybe his name is Kenny Miles. Um, uh, I don't. His character might be Mike. I don't know. It was later on in the series. Um, because season Woodrow, five. Was it five? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. The barber, yeah, yeah. the Penske Files. Yeah, he. I think. I'm assuming this is Kenny. He's the one that gave George the big office. Yes. The, yes. the small office. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. 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 It must. It must have been. Yeah. Nineteen ninety-five. Is that what you're saying? Nineteen ninety. No, no season, season five. five. So ninety-three. Yeah, that makes sense because we drove back to New York after that, um, right after he did it, because I went back onto As the World Turns for a little while. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> love the, love the Pensky file, <laughs> uh, Maggie. Well, you know, another one question I had: we like to kind of get an idea of, um, you know, the any stories you have from from offset from you know was there you know anything you know the table reads or during lunch or a lot of times you hear michael richards is in the corner practicing you people notice that or or just like maybe uh the suits on set if it's early season two was there a vibe there but you know kind of like the the week we kind of talked about the scene and and that that aspect of it i'm curious if you have any stories you can remember that were stuck out to you as far as like behind the scenes kind of stuff. I know you said Jerry X'd you out, but I mean, is there any, anything, uh, anything else there that maybe happened with Jason or, or, or Julia? Yeah. I mean, it was, um, you know, I was there Thursday afternoon. So they'd already been working Thursday before I got there Then Friday and then the weekend and then Monday and then Tuesday is all the big hoo-ha, you know, with everybody's very distracted and trying to focus. So I don't really remember any other stories besides when Jerry was going off for the weekend, he's like, um, can I, you know, we, you want to, I can't remember how he put it, but you know, <laughs> he asked me out. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't remember any more interactions. I wish that I'd gotten a picture, but I was feeling like, Oh, you know, I want to be cool. You know, I don't, I don't want to be the the guest star who's like, you know, asking for a picture with the star, but <laughs> right. like, I wish that you know <laughs> um so no I no can't uh no rap party i think the rap party was at uh 
what this one the improv? Like? Was this one of the improv, the rap party? Season two? No, rap party. Rap parties usually, from what I understand, happen at the end of the season. Yeah. And this was the very beginning of the season. So, um, oh, yeah. I think I might have been, I think I couldn't go for some reason. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Did not, did not go. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't go. <laughs> I guess because I still didn't know really who they were. And so I was just, I had something else to do then that's what I went to do. So, you know. Um. <laughs> well, Maggie, this is, uh, this has been great. I actually learned a lot. Um, I'm, it's funny. You're a teacher, you're teaching sitcoms now. So, um, I certainly learned a lot from the, the, the camera, the camera for camera, the whole thing. But if this was, uh, this was such a treat. And like, like I said, your, your scene in here is just remarkable. And I don't know, always kind of had a, as scary as you were, just always had a, a special place in, in our heart. That's why we ranked this episode so high because of actors uh, like you, Maggie. So thank you so much. Thank yeah, you, you stole Thanks that episode. You stole the whole episode. Thank you. I, I kind <laughs> of think that might be one of the reasons why they had Christine do another episode because I think it was supposed to be like her episode, but my character really came on and sort of, you know, had the big boom, you know, moment. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, and also because she's so wonderful, of course, and they saw her one woman show. Um, but I, I think they probably wanted to give her more of a, you know, something else to do because <laughs> they love her so much. <laughs> so what, uh, before we let you go, where, what are you up to now? I mean, I know you're doing a lot of the, the you know, the coaching and teaching, but where else uh, can we find you? Yeah, I just did um, my ninth um, episode in the Dick Wolf series of, uh, FBI Most Wanted um, recently. And then I did my fourth, also in the Dick Wolf um, uh, universe, uh, my fourth Law and Order SVU. Oh, yeah. I regular Law and Order and Law and Order Criminal Intent. So I did my fourth one um, with Mariska again uh, nice. this, this few months ago as well. So, um, yeah, keeping things going. Very cool. Excellent. Well, keep up the good work. We we love seeing you, whether it's uh, you know comedy or drama. But uh, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Yeah, you too, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, you Maggie. This was awesome. Okay. Take this care. Was so much fun. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right. Have a good night.